Hey guys, Kim here, and we're back for another Tuesday tip. So, not gonna be on here too long. I am a full time nurse practitioner, full time wife, full time mom, and I gotta make sure that my dinner is good for tonight. So we will not be on here long, but I did wanna make sure that I keep this commitment to you guys. So let's hop right into it. Let me pull up my slides there. And today we are going to be talking about diabetes education. So if you have been listening to me for any amount of time, whether it's over on my YouTube channel, Kim E, the Diabetes MP, you've been following me here on Instagram, one of the things that you're going to hear me say and forever hear me say is the importance of diabetes education, okay? And I think when I say that, it can fall on deaf ears because I believe people are like, of course, we, you know, we, we're nurse practitioners, we educate. Yes, but here's the caveat to this, okay? It's not so much about us educating our patients about their diagnosis because you have to keep in mind, guys, that when somebody has been dealing with something for years and in some cases decades for some, you know, y y there's not too much that you um, are going to be able to tell them that they have not already heard. And so the best bet that you can do is there is something that's out there. It's a real thing and it's called diabetes self-management education. Okay. And they've even expanded it more for like the support and the training and things like that. Now, let me hop right on over. So why is this important? Okay. So diabetes self-management and, and uh, education and support, the reason why it is beneficial OK, is because this helps our patients to have knowledge and to take ownership of their diagnosis. OK, at the end of the day, we only see a snapshot of our patients. They come into us maybe every three months, some people every six. And really, honestly, there are some people who don't go to the doctor regularly. You know, I have even come across people who their their doctors just you know every time the pharmacy calls for a refill they just refill i ha i hate to say it but you know but we do have to be talking to our patients we have to be managing our patients and we have to empower them to self manage their diagnosis okay this is by far going to get us better patient outcomes, okay? They spend more time with themselves than we do, okay? And so it has been proven that people that have a good regimen of like self-care and self-management um, education, they're typically healthier. They typically spend less money on their diagnosis. And as we know, like diabetes costs our healthcare si system millions, 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 probably even up into the billions from all of the complications that come off of it, from all of the, you know, different things. I mean, it costs, it's a very expensive for those who do not manage their diagnosis well. And so it's very important that we get in there and we educate um, regularly. So... Here's the thing with diabetes self-management education and support. We should honestly be doing this not just one time, not just when we first diagnose, but there are actual times when we actually should be educating our patients. And it's a cycle, y'all. So you can't just educate your patient and then that's it. We diagnose or when we see them, it's actually a very methodological way of how you should go about um, educating your patients. So let's talk about the first time, one of the times that you should be educating. And ding, 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 no surprise at diagnosis. So definitely if you have a newly diagnosed diabetic, you really want to get in there and you want to address like the nutritional, um, the nutritional needs, the emotional needs, um, I know for me personally, the patients that I have come across, diabetes ha is like the black plague. 
You know what I'm saying? And so you really want to make sure that we send our patients off with hope. So you have to, and even some patients, you may even have to send for therapy. I mean, that's, that's not something that is uncommon. You know what I'm saying? And so you definitely want to make sure that you're getting in there with your brand new patients, brand new, newly diagnosed patients, making sure that they are equipped to, um, start off. Another thing too, is you also want to you also want to take the time to make sure that you are talking to them about safety practices as well. So they need to know the things that will keep them safe. Like they need to know about hypoglycemia. They need to know how to take their medicines properly. They need to know how to check, you know, they need to know how to be able to, you know, troubleshoot. So at diagnosis, that's definitely a time when you would be educating. Next, annually. Okay, so now here is the thing with doing it annually. We need to go back and we need to be reviewing, okay, making sure that people, because, you know, over the year, things can change. Um, thing, a lot of things can change. So we need to be going back in there and we need to be reviewing with our patients, you know, just those certain topics. Are you okay with this? Let's go back through your medications and stuff like that. Um, also you really want to do this for people who have long standing diabetes, people who have had this diagnosis for a very long time. You want to definitely make sure that you're touching base with them every single year. The third time that we would be, um, educating is when there are complicating factors. So this would be when new complications arise, when they start having issues with, you know, the many different complications that can come from diabetes if they're having issues with their eyes if they're having some neuropathy you know any some kidney issues heart conditions you want to make sure that we're going back and we're also helping them understand the complication what they can do again give hope but then also educate them on what's going on with their body you know what I'm saying? And what they can do leaving your office moving forward. Um, you definitely want to make sure that you are addressing any physical, financial, or emotional limitations that may come up. That is another complicating factor. Like if someone, their dexterity decreases, um, if they can't afford their medicines anymore, that's a complicating factor. Emotionally, if they're just fatigued and they're just overwhelmed. You know, there are times, especially when you have a patient that has had the diagnosis and their numbers are not getting better. You know what I'm saying? That can be very overwhelming for people. You want to take time to like re-educate, you know, let's do some more goal setting. Let's readdress our goals. You know, let's see where the breakdown is. That is a time. That's the third time that you would want to be um, educating your patient. And then lastly, you want to educate when there is transition, any type of transition that could really shake up their way of life. So this would be like if there's someone different, there's a new person upon their um, in their medical team. So typically with someone who is a diabetic, they should have a medical team. You know what I'm saying? They should have a podiatrist. They should have an endocrinologist. They should have clearly a primary care provider. And they should have a nutritionist, you know, um, a dietitian. They should have those things. Um, some people may even have to have a cardiologist on board. There's a lot of different people that will make up their team. And if there is a change, for whatever reason, that is a time we need to come back and we need to re-educate and we need to revisit the education. Also, if there's living changes, living situation changes. So big in if you have a patient who goes from like assisted living to like maybe living with the with one of their children, or even if they go from living on their own to going to living in assisted living, you know, typically in places like that, people don't keep their medicines in their room. Okay. There is a nurse or a med nurse that goes and does a med pass. And so there's going to be a transition there. You know, if a patient is used to taking their blood sugar so many times a day to now, they're now having to wait for a nurse or a tech to go around to do their blood sugar checks, that's a transition. And we need to help them um, formulate a plan. And also on our end, talking to the facility that they're going to, or even if it's, 
you know, vice versa, where they're going from assisted living to living with a family member or something, talking with that family member and bringing them in on the education as well. So just a recap over when to educate, when to really press and uh, visit the education. You want to do this at diagnosis. You want to do this annually. You also want to do this when there's complicating factors. And you lastly want to do this when there is a transition in care. This is an ongoing process y'all it's a cycle it keeps going there may be times where you may have to educate every three months about something we should really be talking to our patients every time we see them just asking if everything is okay but these are the big ones that you definitely want to make sure that you're getting some time and you're going back and say hey let's sit down let's have some time for some diabetes education okay and then lastly what's next I do want to invite you guys to check me out over on my YouTube channel. My channel is Kim E, the Diabetes MP. I have a whole playlist over just patient education videos. So if you ever find yourself in a pinch and you're not able to educate the way that you want, I have some common topics over there. And every so often I may add some videos here and there. So that's a resource that you can send your patients to as well as you can refer to yourself. And then of course, over on my blog, um, I, I try to make sure that I am putting content out for different types of learners. So some people like videos, some people like things that are written, they like print. Um, some people like social media. So I try to have a variety of content that can like really speak to many different types of nurses and nurse practitioners. So those are two resources um, that you should definitely look into and go ahead and subscribe. Again, if you have any questions that you want me to come on here to answer, I am committing to coming over, over here on Tuesdays briefly to answer a quick question. So go ahead and DM me if you do have a question and I will put it in the questions that are coming up. You have been sitting here with Kim E, the Diabetes MP, and I will catch you on next week. Bye.